Now, how can I convey that which the eye within me wants to say? If you notice in the background, it's little to no sound. It's a candle. Light. Fire. It's a window. It just cracked. It's representing air. Of course, presence is always present. It's that which is beyond physical substance and nature's elements, which are operating within us at full force and improper balance. And so I simply show up today not really having anything in particular to say, but something is telling me to make this video. And I guess within a certain context, you could say that there is a desire to express, however, The desire is not a drivenness. It's not that I have to, or even that I choose to, or even want to. I certainly don't need to. God doesn't need any co-creators. He has no needs or desires. I don't want to look up to the sky and wonder why. But we want to close our physical eyes and focus inwardly on consciousness. And thus, I say this because as I was sitting in what we can label meditation, simply sitting, not to accomplish anything, but we can call it the eternal waiting. Simply sitting just to sit, be silent relish the source of existence which is ever with us. Not outside of us, not in the sky. Of course, it's in the sky too, but we don't want to project it outside of us as if it's out there and not simultaneously in here. And when there's that discernment, not just on an intellectual level, but on an experiential level, on a level of knowingness. Seeing all of existence as a harmonious, continuous unfoldment, which is fundamentally beyond personal expression and even personal intention. Of course, what we can label God is a part of creation and apart and aware of every thought, yet isn't the physical substance itself, it's simultaneously within yet beyond. And there's only, only so many ways to say and convey that. Because ultimately, it's there. So as again, I was sitting in meditation which is really a quality, not an act. It's a quality that continues through every act. It's not something that a personal me decides to sit down and do. It's something that happens naturally. It unfolds by itself. It may start off that way. It may start off as 
somebody saying, hey, I'm going to sit down and meditate today. But as one continues to practice naturally, they're overcome and guided by the presence and it simply becomes a natural process. It's not something that they even choose to do. It's something that is manifested through what they formerly thought as a personal, individual, perhaps separate consciousness instead of that sense of oneness and wholeness and a connectedness with all of existence. Simultaneously a part of vibratory creation yet beyond it. The silent yet ever-present source that is beyond vibratory existence, that is beyond sound, beyond all the elements. The element of nature, of creation, the creator, mother, father, creator, we could say divine mother, it's manifest as the elements in nature. Shakti, I mentioned that in the last video, is energy, which represents the power to act, to animate our intelligence, to live and be in accordance and harmonious with all of existence. And then there's the transcendent elements, which is not part of the five elements or the elements of natural existence of creation but the transcendent element which is again beyond vibratory creation and existence which we can call the father creator which we can say is spirit but really we don't want to label it and thus limit it, limit it because it's limitless, boundless. And so I'm simply sitting, I can say I was, but I am just continuous. And even I am is kind of a limited statement because the am implies beingness or being. But simply the statement I, it doesn't need to be followed by am because I is a complete sentence in itself. Just like yes, we want to say yes to life, yes to existence. Yes to that which is beyond nature's elements, which is simultaneous, continuous. I is a complete sentence. Yes is a complete sentence. No is a complete sentence. But we want to think beyond bin binary yes and no. And so, to look back, I know I can get off on tangents. There's never a moment when I am not conscious. As I was, I am, see what I did there? Sitting in meditation, the thought arose from silence. How interesting, fascinating, and beautiful it is that humanity is like a soup of consciousness of different levels of awareness of course there's the one fundamental awareness which we all are the intelligence which is animated by the light of consciousness by the energy by the shakti which is simultaneously one with consciousness Energy and consciousness go hand in hand. They can't be separated, but to create a conceptual model 
for intellectual categorization, we can think in terms of binary selection, in terms of a sequential order, in terms of linear time and space, all verbiage and language and words have a beginning and an ending point. You start from the left on the page and read to the right. So it's kind of difficult to speak about the light because the words themselves as they arise are an emanation of that light. But the linear mind, the intellect wants to wants to follow them instead of perceive the essence as it arises in the nowness, as, as an expression of consciousness, pure consciousness, awareness, which is beyond analysis. Of course, again, thoughts and analysis are included within that, but that which is the silence beyond it, which is the source that is simply aware of the thought process as I'm sitting in meditation is again beyond vibratory creation. All thoughts are sound. All words are sound. Thoughts are not verbally expressed outwardly, but they're still sound. They represent sound inwardly. They're still a vibration. Want to think? terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Every thought and emotion, every expression, every action represents vibration. In this endless sea of consciousness, the Shakti energy manifested outwardly as creation is an expression of this. And it may be difficult to express the presence if one is not, is one is, if one is habituated to perceiving in terms of appearance as opposed to essence. When you're in the physical presence of an entity that has embodied that energy, it's easy to feel it. It doesn't even need to be conveyed. One can simply be silent. But over communication, over video like this, it may not be as easy to convey it unless one is able to see beyond the physical the physical entity and simply see that the words represent energy and see beyond logic and intellectuality and simply be as their attention focused inwardly, simultaneously, outwardly, as the objective reality melts and falls back, we could say, into subjectivity. They become one. There is no separation. There's no difference between outward appearance and essence because that essence is felt in everything without, and thus, within and without, that notion of a separate creation vanishes into the oneness of existence, and thus, complete wholeness, this powerful process that we're all a part of in terms of consciousness process is 
not complete or continuous. One may feel complete, it can be complete, but the process itself is continuous, it's ongoing. It's not a complete process because it's eternal. And as a seemingly individual entity, we represent a part of that eternal process. You want to think in terms of the process in that context. Because all power in creation is a manifestation of context. All content, all physical form is a manifestation of context. And when we observe and we understand the levels of consciousness, from a certain context, we see that we see with complete and utter clarity. Not saying that we know everything, not saying that there isn't room for growth, because at least within this characteristic of this consciousness, quality of this consciousness is that there's always room for growth and further room to let go and surrender. Surrender oneself as if this life were something to give. You can say, oh Lord, I surrender this life unto thee, unto eternity, but Really, it's not even yours to give. It's already his. <laughs> his, right? We think of God in terms of a, whatever image we've been programmed with, maybe. Maybe we've transcended the notion of God as an image. Or any preconceived notion we may have of divinity. But, you know, I think I've said this in a previous video. If God was a buffalo... Or if you were a buffalo, then you would think God in terms of a buffalo, right? So, as a human being, we tend to think of God in terms of a human being. Or whatever, you know, we've been indoctrinated or programmed towards, potentially. Not necessarily. Nothing that I say is... Ultimately, the fundamental truth, it's an expression of that truth, but it's not the truth itself, which can't really be expressed verbally. Take a few moments to focus inwardly. And as you do that continuously, you'll notice that you are the consciousness that permeates all of humanity. There'll be no sense of separateness. You can be fixed on your inner light, the light of awareness, even when your eyes are open. There is no preferential selection or opposition between this and that. No sense of separation. And thus, as you are that oneness, you are, whether you feel it or not, I assure you, but as you are that, 
you, you don't need morality. Because if you experience that entity as me, if you experience everything as yourself, as a part of me, if you include it as a part of you, not intellectually, but because naturally that's how you be, that's how you are. We've evolved to that point, that level of consciousness, where you are the process, the oneness, which unfolds by itself without any help, without any drivenness of personal desire or neediness. You don't need morality. Because that's within the realm of linearity. A, a reason. Which is limited because it's local. It operates within time. Whereas love is global and whole. It, it's a state of being. And as love evolves to being unconditional, it becomes so joyful. And you just want to share that joy. And sometimes you're simply sitting in such joy and you don't... You want to share it. And you don't know how... You're like, man, I'm sitting in this room by myself. I feel so wonderful. But ultimately then you remind yourself, i got to surrender this too. i got to surrender this joy, this ecstasy. Whatever label, whatever it may be. Because ultimately that's not me. I'm transcendent even to that, to all feelings. Whatever goes on in the mind, feelings, or otherwise, I am beyond that and all of time. I'm beyond all of existence, no matter how fine, how beautiful it is. And within that context, when we identify as such, not again, mentally, or through a personal self-image. I am this nationality, or religion, or personal identity, or whatever it is. No, it's not identification with mentation. It is separate personal mind, but it's something that happens naturally within. It's so sublime. It's within the potentiality, the infinite potentiality of every seemingly separate entity. Because we all continuously can embody This energy, because we all have infinite potential and free will. And within a certain context, the only real significance of this earthly reality is the effects. Uh, it's really beyond cause and effects. But, for lack of a better term, what we could say is the consequence it has on the spiritual destiny after physical life ends. Because this physical individual is ephemeral, but our true identity, that which is beyond the physical, is eternal. Even the life breath, that which is like a string which connects us to the physical body, which is going on continuously. Even that, although it's seemingly eternal in terms of the physical existence, that 
even that is transitory. Because it's in the space between the in and the out breath. Just like the space in between thoughts, that silence. That is us. That is the boundlessness. The boundless transcendence element that I formerly referenced beyond physical existence. To live harmoniously in the vibratory creation, you want to be aware, of course, of all the physical, natural elements. And we can do and be that part of creation while simultaneously existing as the awareness that is beyond it. In identification with that awareness, with this awareness that is simultaneously within me and you, it's all present within all of reality, beyond all labels and intellectuality, which is included within it, again, of course, but we don't want to identify as a separate mind or body. And I guess that is I know that is my purpose to be that, to be that representation of the transcendent element in creation, to express it, or at least attempt to convey it somehow, some way. Your will is done this day on earth as it is in heaven, expressed through me as a piece of your creation, manifest to, in the direction of, through, outwardly, and as me. Manifest to, through, and as me. Showing up without a personal plan, without a personality, which we can wear when we need to, when we're interacting with the world, but when we're simply sitting and being silent, we don't need to wear it. Right now, we could say, okay, Alex showed up today with a personality, but I'm not, like I said, I didn't show up with a plan of what to say. And if you made it at this point in the video, you can really feel that. <laughs> I'm not reading the script. I didn't memorize something beforehand. I just felt as I was sitting, wow, something wants to express through me. I don't know, I'm gonna set up the phone and we'll see what comes out of me. It's a surprise as much to me as it is to you. Maybe it's not a surprise to you because maybe you have a preconceived notion of who I am as a personality. You might think you know me. Whether you met me or not in person, you watched all the videos, wow, I, I really know this guy. Or even somebody, family, who thinks they know me. Really, subjectively, nobody knows me and nobody knows you. Somebody said to me recently, grandmother, family, she was like, I know you better than you know yourself. Like, wow. I'm really not surprised by that much anymore, but that surprised me because I see her as a reflection of that oneness of my own consciousness, which is not separate from her showing up as a reflection in reality. Saying that got me thinking, wow. Maybe there is something more for you to surprise me with the word. So I said, I'm not surprised by that much, but that really surprised me. Because, like, no, nobody knows me. I don't even know myself, really. Because that would imply a duality between the knower and the known. The knower and the known are one. There is no separate me or personality or individual identity to perceive within me, within me, within the body, 
which we can label as divinity, which is simply expressing through me. Not even part of an intentionality, which we could say within a certain context, love has an intention, but once you elevate even more in vibration, even beyond love, even beyond that ecstasy, beyond that joy, you realize that to intend something is represents a duality. And we can be conscious of that word is because is really We can use the word perceived as instead of is, unless something is really, because a lot of humanity views things perceptually and ident identifies with perception and mentation and intention and not that which is beyond the physical creation, beyond vibratory existence and vibration essence which is pure silence the light of awareness which is beyond words beyond those words beyond light beyond awareness it's expressed as those words but the, the words are simply a vibratory carrier wave to transmit the intrinsic knowingness which is pure consciousness. It is all knowing. There's not a person that knows everything. And of course, like I said, there's always room for growth. I'm a lifetime student, right? We all are. We're each brought here for a reason. And thus, we want to focus within. Because that reason is not found in the outer creation. In the outward vibration. It's found within. You reach a certain point where you have to search for a reason. You have to seek a reason. Yeah, because otherwise, there is no reason to continue with physical existence. Other than perhaps love. Love is the sole motivator. The continuance of physical existence. There's really no personal desire left. There's no higher or lower reason, no good or bad reason. When we think in terms of frequency, we can think in terms of electricity. And the inner light of all of humanity. It's not to be viewed separately. Because each of us embodies the one source that which we can label divinity. Which is known intuitively within each of us as a permanent knowingness which we can all access in consciousness through living 
come on we and thinking beyond the personal me even beyond self and other even beyond living selflessly you can say love is selfless but that which is divinity is beyond living selflessly because again that living selflessly implies a duality between self and other when that which is divinity is one's own self one's very own self which is not separate from somebody else so carry that concept if it must be that if it's not a If it's, it is a part of your being and your knowing, but if you don't feel that, if it's not a feeling as of yet, it is actually. We don't want to think in terms of that concept, in terms of if, which represents doubt. It is now. There is no doubt that within you, divinity can be found. That which is so profound, just beyond poetry and it's within you in the eternal beyond what we view conceptually but if it must be held as a concept Simply that I am that which is all that surrounds me. When you look at everything equally, with an equal eye, not separately, you become a transformed human being. That might have been originally been your intention, transformation. But as you surrender all intentionality, you're overtaken by divinity, by the presence as you embody your soul essence. Ultimately, there is no separate soul. And think of the soul in terms of the eternal energy expressed as an individual body. This is my soul, that's your soul. But ultimately, it's one energy in one soul, just at different levels of energy, different levels of awareness within a body. I'm aware from within a body, but I am not the body. I'm the awareness which permeates all of existence. Aware from within the body, all that which is simultaneously outside of me. And I feel that as me. Beyond all intention, beyond all contemplation, which implies a seeming separation between the contemplator and the contemplated, between the knower and the known, between the intender and the intention. There's no separation. You are right now that which you can say is divine providence. It's divine will. Thine will. Thine, not mine will be done this day is done this day
this food, this physical substance, is thine, not mine. I offer that which is already yours onto you. I offer this life, though there's no personality to offer it. It's already yours, but I offer that which is already yours. I surrender to you wholeheartedly. So ultimately, it's the fully surrendered entity that More can be said.